Hey, you guys probably know that I make my own pickups now, which I really enjoy doing, and I make them for my guitars as well as I sell them to other builders over at newperspectivesmusic.com. Um, and so I've been trying to find my own voice in them, using as much reclaimed materials as possible and making them like look appropriate for my guitars and stuff. So, um, you know, here's one of my, my favorite designs is the, uh, the $2 bill foil. This is an older one. I, I fold the $2 bills different now, which is modeled after uh, the old vintage gold foils, but, you know, with like a modern twist to it. Um, and then uh, I was also experimenting with making humbuckers from, reclaimed pallet wood nails and I base them off the classic Gibson PAF design which stands for patent applied for when Gibson uses it but when I use it it stands for pallet as <laughs> so um, I liked I liked those pickups a lot I think they sound great but they're really labor intensive and uh, so I was like well maybe I'll just use new nails instead and I'm still trying to design the best way to make them but then I had this idea that I thought it would be a lot of fun to use instead of just boring old round nails um, I like square cut nails like these vintage style square cut nails which you can still get and um i thought that this head would look pretty cool as our pole and um so well let's just go ahead and make them i started by sorting through my grandpa style coffee can of random nails that i've collected over the decades i have a lot of cans like this these nails do vary a little bit in size so i took a couple quick measurements and then i just started by using a piece of scrap closet door of course and cut out some test bobbits on my thunder laser nova 35. And that's an Alnico 5 bar magnet that I'm going to use in the bottom of it. I realized pretty quickly that I also need to put holes in the piece that holds the magnet in place for the nails to go through past the magnet to make sure they're making good contact. And they were a little bit loose in the holes. So this is, the, this is basically the assembly of the pickup once it's all wound. Is we have these holes that go down through a bobbin. Like that and they have to touch this magnet down here. Um, and then, you know, one's round one direction, one's round the other because of the way the magnet is north and south or props each other. And then you can put it all together and you have a humbucker pickup. The problem I was running into with these stupid designs is, <laughs> is making everything sit still and nice. Um, like, so I just went and I made these holes and it's not bad, but I gotta figure out how to make these bobbins stable so I can wind them. Um, and then I just had sort of a revolutionary idea that these are nails. I could actually nail them in. These nails are wildly inconsistent the way they're made. And so by just making the holes smaller than the size of the nail, like decidedly smaller, uh, I could get a tight fit so they'd stay nice and tight in there. And then um, I did the same thing on the bottom bobbin, making the holes even smaller for the taper, uh, but making it so tight that I would have to pressure fit it into place. Uh, this took care of all the inaccuracies and, and, um, and differences in the nails. But of course they have to be shorter too because otherwise that pickup would never fit inside a guitar. So I just drew a line and set up this little jig to, to cut the nails shorter. It doesn't really matter. I can still, you know, do what I need to do. This took care of all the stability problems I was having. The, the wood is pliable enough to where I could, you know, bang the nails into it and get a nice tight pressure fit without having to worry about it you know, splitting apart on me because it's, it's plywood. I've changed the holes around a little bit and, uh, and I added holes to the bottom plate so the nails can actually go through a little bit. Um, and so now this is the way it would go together. I can get these two pieces into this bottom piece so all the nails are touching the magnet and then um, I can go in here and I could actually, once I'm done winding, I don't want to do it now. And I'll be able to give this a little tappy tap with a hammer right into the bottom piece, the bottom plate. And of course I'll be gluing it and stuff too. Um, and so it should all make good contact with the magnet and, um, and stick together as one solid unit. In theory. Now that I successfully got one together, the second one went together a lot easier, of course. Um, but the practice makes perfect. <laughs> Although I still haven't quite figured out exactly how to put the whole bottom together, which you'll see later in the video what I did. But uh, so, you know, I was able to tap these together and I had these little shims that set a specific uh, height distance for me that you'll see here I put inside uh, the pickup. There's little MDF slivers and then I can make sure that both pieces are the same height so they'll line up properly. 
I insulated the nails with some um, fabric style electrical tape and now they're ready for winding. I also took a minute to just label uh, each bottom before I did this of, uh, you know, north and south and up and down and all this stuff just to um, help me keep the winding process going properly. It's really easy to get screwed up. I bought this DCS pickup winder off eBay for 200 bucks from another guy that's just like us making stuff in his shop. He makes these and it does everything I needed to do. Um, there are fancier ones that you can get, of course, but uh, for the amount that I'm winding pickups, this does all I need. It can go both directions and I can adjust the speed and, and everything. So I wound my four bobbins. I did 5,000 winds per part for the neck position pickup and 5,200 winds per part for the bridge pickup to make that just a little bit hotter. Currently, I'm just epoxying in uh, nuts that I can thread these uh, screws into, and I sort of sandwich them in together to, to get all the pressures right when I put these pieces together. In the future, I might get actual metal plates made that I can then tap so the, um, the threads will go right in, but I have to really finalize my design and make something that'll work for everything. And then I also realized that um, in the past, I, I designed a piece with these corners cut off so I have room for the wires, and so I just had to cut that off by hand, and I'll rectify that in future versions. Now with everything wound, uh, I was ready to assemble and put all these pieces together. This l looks worse right now because of all the splintered um, closet door wood, but this went together a lot better and it's just got to Tweak the sizes a little bit. It'll probably go to bed, go together even better. You can see things are just a little bit, there's a couple little off spots here. Once I had it completely assembled, I dipped it into some melted hot paraffin wax. And you can see all those little bubbles that start to come up out of it. That's the wax seeping into all the little nooks and crannies of that pickup, really sealing it all up and making it nice and solid. It's common for the heat to loosen up that tape, but if you just push it back into place as the wax cools, it sticks the tape in place where it belongs. The trim rings for the humbuckers are also made from reclaimed closet doors, but I double them up to make them a little bit thicker and stronger. Hey guys, today's video is sponsored by me <laughs> and my supporters over at patreon.com slash Tim Sway. That's right, I don't take money from companies. There's a couple that I work with, but I don't just put pointless ads in the middle of my videos that mean nothing to you or me or anybody that are just money grabs. Um, but one of the ways I can keep this channel going and making fun free content is by getting the support that I get over at patreon.com slash Tim Sway and by selling the products that I make here on this channel and off the channel, like some of this stuff that's hanging up behind me. That's all gonna be for sale soon at newperspectivesmusic.com, as well as some of the other pickups that I make that are already in stock. Go check it out. Back to the show. Well, yeah, the underside's still a little ugly, of course, um, but they're all waxed in, in their frames, and I got 7.3K on the neck and 8.2 on the bridge, so they're right in that sort of vintage humbucker range. Uh, I can't wait to put these into a guitar and try them out. I have my little test guitar here. Thanks, Russia. And um, what I can do is I can just slide pickups into this big cavity and, and just make sure they work. I have them plugged into my little kind of cruddy Line 6 test amp here and um, we can hear this is the neck position nail pickup it's not quite level so I can see it's working and obviously um, we're not going to get a great kind of idea how it actually performs in this situation but what we can do is I have a real neck position Gibson PAF right here. Let's do a little just AB comparison. It doesn't sound all that much different to me, but of course we'll have to put it into a real guitar to find out. surprisingly a lot hotter and I was concerned that it wouldn't be because of the you know the whole nail thing but it's also a little bit closer to the strings I can't quite get it as low because it's a little thicker as I showed in the video I still need to figure out how to make the back side look as good as the front side like this is for a guitar I'm gonna make but if I were to sell these pickups I would want these the whole insides to look better to the customer um, but I'm going to build a guitar now so I can actually hear these for real I'm gonna you know I dig them I think they're cool uh, I like that they're not quite perfect looking um, you know, that all of the heads 
uh, are a little bit different and sort of crooked here and there and stuff, but we got plenty of coverage. Uh, I think these would work good on just about any guitar and in probably any position, like, um, you know, because of the way that the poles are on the widths and stuff. And I was afraid that they weren't going to have enough volume and clarity because the magnet is so far away going up all this old iron, but it works great. Um, there's plenty of volume there and I'm super excited to hear these in a guitar. Uh, sometime, just keep watching my channel. They'll pop up again. Thanks a lot and be good.